Well, welcome, welcome again. Um, we're going to be talking about in this episode about voting taxes and cryptocurrency, right? Because everybody keeps asking me the same question. How can I avoid this to pay, you know, stop paying cryptocurrency taxes? Well, the reality is that we all have to pay our shit. Yeah, I know it's not the answer that you might want to hear, but that is the truth. And that is just how our government works, right? So what things can you do right now that is going to help you reduce those taxes. Well, I'm sharing screen as I normally do. I like to share articles or sometimes other, you know, um, blogs from from different um, websites, but really coming from the right source, right? Because I always tell people, get the right information from the right people and the right platforms, right? So one of the things that we can do to avoid uh, taxes, um, or at least to kind of minimize it, just to say the least, legally, Right. Uh, we don't want to do anything illegal because it backfires us. And I've seen it many times when people outsmart the IRS, they don't realize that they really get infected. Anyhow, so one of the best things that you can do is number one is I always tell people if you don't need the money. All right. Very simple. As I'm sharing right here, the way it works is you got short term capital gains or losses or long term. Very simple. Always remember in the back of your mind, short term means that you hold your assets, which means your crypto, your stocks, or even your real estate, that's right, they're all eligible for capital gain or losses. They go by the same ruling, pretty similar. There are some exceptions into that rule, but at least when it comes to losses and gains, as long as you have it less than a year, you will be paying ordinary income. What the hell is ordinary income? What you pay through your employer, right? When you get your paycheck, same thing. So taxes can go from zero all the way to 24%. Now, as of, as of the recording of this time uh, in 2022, that is the tax bracket table. Now, the tax bracket table, for your information, uh, just to give it to you in a nutshell, because obviously, as you can probably realize, taxes are very complex. What I have learned took me many, many years. And I try to make it very simple and linear for people to understand because it's not easy. But one of the things that you want you to keep in the back of your mind that is important is that if you have those type of passive income, which that's what they call, under one year, you will pay ordinary income, no exception to it, okay? So a lot of people, clients, when they come to me and they have made a lot of gains, like many of you did, especially last year, when the markets were really hot, right? And there was a huge bubble going on and everybody thought it was going to last forever, well, guess not. <laughs> that was not the reality. So now a lot of people were able to really take advantage and pick a lot of those gains, right? And now with all these tax extensions, they have to start paying. Now, remember, if you hold it for less than a year, you're going to get hit with the, uh, which is ordinary income. Again, it could be anything from 10 to 24%. It does vary also if you're single, if you marry or if you're head of household, okay? There's a variation. I'm going to do another, um, you know, quick video. Uh, and usually my quick videos, by the way, I'm trying to make them in a nutshell as I'm sharing a lot of financial information, not only about taxes, but also about investments and where to put your hard-earned money. Because I understand all of you, that's what you want to do. And yes, legally, you can avoid a lot of taxes and there's a lot of loopholes as long as you do it the right way. Not your way, but the way the IRS has the guidance and rules. That's all I tell people. Just follow what the, uh, Uncle Sam wants and you won't get in trouble. Okay, very simple. Fear not, it's just the way the system has been built. Um, and again, if you want it for a long-term capital gain, this is the nice thing about it. If you don't need to sell something just this year, for an example, and you can wait just 12 months and one day, then voila, you right now have saved yourself a lot of taxes because the maximum of, of capital gain taxes is only between 0% also up to 20% max. So picture this. If you're already in a 22 or 24% tax bracket, that means it benefits you really to sell, okay, those assets like crypto and stocks and so on. You'll be able to do it after the 12 months. And that's going to save you 2 4% or even more. 
Okay, so that's the huge benefit. Also, another thing I want you to keep in back of your mind is that, for example, between crypto and stocks, guess what? You're able, okay, to upset, that's right, let me repeat that, upset the capital gain and losses between the two of them. So if you made a lot of money in crypto and then you have some losses in the stocks, then you're able to upset that, and that's called harvesting losses okay so again i know things can be a little complicated we we try people in our industry to try explain it very easy for the typical taxpayer but sometimes it can be very complex but just keep that in mind so if you don't need the money you don't have to sell and that includes the stocks any stocks that you own or you know exchange you know etfs the same thing hold on to 12 months and that's it I always tell people, even when it comes to stocks or crypto, by the way, I invest in both. So I know exactly where you're at because I feel the same way. And when the market's high, everybody's happy and excited. When the market goes down, everybody's sad and angry. <laughs> so let's be patient about it, but understand what taxes and implications of it. Because if you, look, if you sell now and you take a huge loss, that loss, you might be able to offset it for next year. So it's a decision that you can only make and hopefully even with some help with somebody professionally, whether it's myself or anybody else that you want to hire, but make sure that they do have the expertise when it comes to taxes. I think that's so, so important. I see a lot of people out there, you know, in YouTube and in TikTok and many places, platforms out there and not bad mouthing, but it's the truth. They just read a lot of articles and they really don't understand the fundamentals of how taxation really works. So get it from the right source. And again, a lot of good CPAs, accountants out there like myself that we share very valuable information to help you. We want you to avoid the headache. And by the way, I'm going to be saying this over and over. As of this year, if you haven't heard with the Stimulus Act, I have a separate video on that that you might be interested in watching. Very, very important. It's going to be very beneficial for you. I'm almost promised you that. And I dare to say promise. Yes, I did. Because there's been $80 billion given to IRS. And guess what? They're coming to do a lot of audits. They're going to have a lot of fun because they know a lot of people were really, really not reporting their taxes in the last two years. So please watch out, be cautious, do the right thing, and don't get yourself in trouble. I tell people it's not worth it. It really isn't. You know what I mean? So just do the right thing. And that's it. Avoid it. Anyhow, so since I'm trying to keep all my videos on your 15 or 10 minutes, I just wanted to touch this base again. You can, I'm sharing this article. This is great information. If you want to go back and really read the details, you're more welcome to do it. Uh, you can find it at uh, financebuzzboz.com. And again, the title of this article is Nine Different Ways to Legally Avoid Taxes and Triple Currency. Another thing that I want to just kind of conclude with is I've seen a lot of people moving to Puerto Rico because as you, I don't know if you're aware, but in, in Puerto Rico, they have an exemption of 100% if you have capital gains. Wow, that's nice. Um, but, you know, be cautious because, I mean, again, if that's all the income that you have, that could also open up, a, you know, it could bring up a red flag. So move to Puerto Rico. That's option number two. It's telling you right there, and it says it right there, 100 exemptions on capital gain. Okay? This is the reason why people move into Puerto Rico. All right? So this is nice, but again, um, I know the fact most people, they will have uh, assets like passive income, again, but they're also going to have what is considered self-employment or business income, okay? So you always want to have one or the other. Now, the other thing you have to say, well, less than a year, it's going to be considered income, okay? Declare your crypto as income, ordinary income, okay? And then you have the other option, like I said, wait the long term, which is not a long time, a year goes by very fast. And as I mentioned, in number five, upset crypto gains with losses. So again, let somebody professionally hopefully help you some way that I think it's going to benefit you. And I see a lot of people say that, you know, it's going to cost them a lot of money. Now in these days, I think we're very reasonable with our pricing. Again, um, you know, I think we want to do the best for people like you, taxpayers out there, because when you do get into an audit, it's going to cost you thousands of dollars. The minimum of an audit is about 5000 and above, by the way. OK, even if you have a small case, that's how costly audits have become, because in general revenue is taking longer and longer 
and extending the audits. And it's not actually that you point fingers at the CPA or accountants like myself. It's just that the IRS is taking longer to process these audits. So the longer you stay and they have to work in your behalf, the more costly it's going to be for you. So to avoid any audits, any compilations or reviews, Again, just do the right thing. Like I said, just make sure that your taxes have been filed correctly. If you misunderstanding, another issue that I've seen with crypto especially is the 89.49.4. Oh my God, Liz, you should have brought that up a little bit earlier. Here's the problem with 89.49. A lot of these softwares are not giving you all the data. You need help. Sick people, like I said, that understand what they're doing and make sure that you get correctly the 89.49, okay? Because that's going to be very, very helpful. If you don't have a breakdown of the basis, how much, you know, uh, quantity, whether it was Ethereum, whether you bought, you know, Bitcoin, whether it was Litecoin, whatever it is that you purchase in the cryptocurrency, if you don't have a detailed breakdown, that's going to count you, uh, you know, a very, they're going to open up their eyes and gonna say, we're going to go ahead and review this return because they want to see everything black and white. They don't want to see no gray zone. So that's my tip to you. If you don't know how to handle 8949, you're not secure, find somebody who can help you. It's very simple. It's a small investment, and I think it's worth the headache of being an audit. Like I said, it's going to cost you over $5,000. And I'm not kidding. I wish I was, but I'm not. Anyhow, I hope my information has been helpful to you. And again, like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to catch up with, like I said, with a lot of things that are happening right now currently. Um, and trying to make, like I said, all these videos as sure as possible. I know everybody is crunching with time, including myself. So I hope this article, like I said, go back, read the whole details if you like, and I'll be seeing you in the next video, okay? On the next episode, by the way. Take care, and I wish you the best. Bye-bye.